All right, everyone, we are back with a, another episode of Arcanum, and we are on the Isle of Despair, and in this episode, we will go through all of the quests on the Isle of Despair. It's a mini-zone. Um, there are a few quests here that we can complete, so we'll take care of these now. All right, so we have to ask about the Black Mountain Clan. Um, he's, they pretty much said the only guy here is Thorvald. Okay, he's a dwarf. All right, two rules. That's great. All right. Where is this beast? I will kill it for a price. It's a deal, sir. So we have a quest now to kill the beast. We'll do that in a moment. What I'd like to do first is uh, do all the quests. All right, gather them all up and then do them, because there's a lot of them that are outside of this uh, little town here. Okay, so now he's asking you, old Max, uh, in a bad sort but dangerous, you know what I mean. I owed him a jug of moonshine for a fortnight, but with all the men disappearing, I've been scared to go out and take it to him. Uh, perhaps I might be of assistance. You're a braver soul than I. If you're willing to face whatever's out there, old Max might not be al even be alive. But I don't want to make him mad if he is. Take this jug out to him, I'll give you a jug of your own. You never know what some of old Norian's moonshine is worth. I'll do so in return. Here we go. Let's so to take a jug of moonshine. Alright, so let's talk to... I think her. Cynthia Boggs. Yeah, she was born here. Okay. Um, what can be done about this? What's around? Okay. So she talks about a tribe of nomadic women, and they will uh, help her because she's a woman um, if we can contact her. All right. Okay, so we have the third quest. I think that's pretty much it. The last and final one is to talk to this guy here, uh, which is, we'll progress the storyline. Oh yeah, this guy too, the collector. Uh, he'll give us a quest to go get some junk. Yeah, so the Shades Beach. So we have to go there and collect some stuff for him. Alright. Interesting. I'll do so in turn. There we go. So let's go do those quests and then we'll come back and we will take care of the quests with uh, the dwarf guy here. The first one we need to do is go around the beach. Um... Let's see. So these footprints here. There we go. Alright, so once we get across this river here, we have to go to these footprints, which are up on top of the map. And we'll take care of the beast. Here it is.
All right, so the monster's dead. We have that quest completed. If you go to the map, you will see the different places we can go to. I think uh, Virgil's dying. <laughs> okay. What did he? What was it? Oh, he put the stinking gloves on. You. What is it that you want, idiot? Me? Jeez. Why in the world? Sometimes they're really dumb. What is it that you want of me? Yeah, so these are gloves that are that kill people. Um, okay, should be fine. So, just a word of uh, advice here: these gloves are probably uh, like Bane gloves. I forget the the exact name of them are, but they. If you drop them on the ground next to people, like NPCs, they will kill people. Like, they actually will kill them. Like, they almost did Virgil. Um, so if you ever have a... If you have somebody pass out, just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go to uh, the beach. Oh, we can't teleport because we are on the Island of Despair. So that's great. We'll go here, then here, then here. So this is the beach. Uh, this is the... It's like a submarine, I guess, or some kind of uh, neat-looking uh, boat or ship. And it crashed, and so now we're trying to find um, stuff for the collector. This is it, yeah. These are the items. We can turn those into the collector. And this we can learn. It's a reanimator. Which is a, a, a technological way of reanimating somebody that has died. Uh, there's nothing else that should be around here. A few uh, beasts around here. But let's move on to the next place. All right, you want to save here, um, cause this guy has a pretty cool storyline. So let's talk to him. Hello, sir. Hello, who might you be? Man holds before you is old, but still holds himself in strength and dignity. He seems to take all of you in at once, weighing what he sees before him. My name is Maximilian. A pleasure, Maximilian. Might I ask you a few questions? Of course. I've brought you a jug of moonshine from Norian. You have. I see Norian hadn't the backbone to deliver it himself. Not that I can blame him. The wilds are no place to be risking your neck for a jug of potato wine. I appreciate it, stranger. I'm sure he wants a receipt. Of course, here you go. Thank you. Might I ask you a few questions? Of course. What are you doing out here? That's my business friend. The Isle of Despair is no place to be asking a man about his past. I recommend you mind your business, sir. Every man has his secrets. Believe me, I understand. Seems a little surprised. He gives you a shrewd look, making a new appraisal. You're right. Please forgive me my short-sightedness. No doubt you've done you've things of value to share as well. Perhaps you and I might have something to speak of after all. Uh, I'd enjoy tell, I'd enjoy that. Tell me of yourself, Maximilian. Perhaps now is a good time to tell the stories. Or forgive me if I'm a little leery of companionship. I have spent many years out in the wild by myself. Uh, might I ask you to tell me of yourself before I begin? Of course, I be and it began not long ago. So you tell me tale. He's silent for a long time. Then, 
it seems grave times have come to Arcanum, and somehow you've become entangled in her problems. You're a brave soul, sir. You are those who would do the things you've done. Virtue and valor allow me to act in no other way. Maximilian smiles. You have no idea how refreshing it is to hear someone speak in such a noble manner, sir. There were years, I believe, that there were no men left in this land who knew what those words meant. Why don't you tell me of your story, Maximilian? Yes, it's long past the time that someone knew my tale. Tell me, friend, do you know of anything of the Kingdom of Cumbria, or capital city of Dernholm, King Praetor I? Uh, I've been there before. I see, in Cumbria I speak of was a much different place, far different than what it is today, I'm sure. I speak of a time where Cumbria was a powerful kingdom when the elves and dwarves would come to her walls to pay tribute to her king, when the banners of the famed dragon knights were timing or were a thing to be respected and feared. I take Cumbria and it's no longer that place. No, there's no doubt that Cumbria is a shadow of her former glory. The day came long ago when her fate was sealed, the day when technology began to rival magic, when the old ways began to fall to a new. What happened? Why did Cumbria resist this change? Yes, and vehemently. My, the, the king at the time, Torin, was a wise and brave man, but set in his ways. He was cut from sterner stuff, but he was like stone, unwavering, but inflexible. He failed to see how Cumbria needed to grow to change. And so he passed laws outlawing the use of technology in his lands and set a ruling council of mage advisors at his side. For years, Cumbria was still very strong and influential, but it was only a matter of time. What happened? Well, Cumbria was surpassed both in commerce and in power. When mighty Tarant demanded the release of certain disputed lands, Cumbria was taught a harsh lesson. The armies of Cumbria were slaughtered. The Dragon Knights cut down by gun and cannon fire. The glory of older days was lost. And what of King Thorin? What happened to him? He was killed. He led the final charge of the Dragon Knights and was shot as any common soldier, unwavering and brave to the end. I see. What does all this have to do with you, Maximilian? With the death of Thorin came a power struggle. There were those who believed that Cumbria would embrace the New Age to seek a better way and to make her powerful again. But others thought differently? Yes, some people cannot see the answer, even when it is laid before him, in the form of a dead king. Torin had two sons. The older son believed in the new ways, and the younger son believed in nothing. And the, so the mage council that Torin had put in place put their influence behind the younger son. Wasn't the elder son the heir to the throne by birthright? Yes, but men will create all manner of evil pursuit of power. The mage council who controlled the younger son brought false accusations against the older son, charging him with treason. He was taken in the night and sent away to rot in prison for the rest of his days. The elder son, by the gods, Yes, stranger, the oldest son was me. I was sent here by my own brother, King Praetor I of Cumbria, and I've been here ever since. Uh, I don't know what to say. I have no words. No words are necessary, friend. You've done enough to sit here and listen to my story. I've made peace with my past. Life here on the Isle is harsh, but a man learns to live with himself, to accept what life brings. But that is so unfair. Perhaps I could bring you home. No, my time in Cumbria has passed. If my brother lives, I'm sure he has paid the price due to him. He was young and foolish. And when one is a king, life is unforgiving when you live so. But Cumbria, perhaps the kingdom still needs you. I can still hear her. You know, the stone walls of Dernholm, the rolling hills, the vales, the trumpet blast of the dragon knights marching to battle. I wake up sometimes and I forget where I am. 
Come back with me, Maximilian. It's not too late. Perhaps I will ask you this, friend. The captain of the Dragon Knights was a man named Warren Peldar. He was my true, my one true friend. If he still lives and cares to do so, tell him I am here, and that I'd enjoy once more the pleasure of his company. I already know of William Warren Delpar, Peldar. Tell him to Leanna. So my old friend is dead. He shall be missed. But Leanna, his daughter, you say, tell me, what is she like? She's a warrior like her father. I see. Perhaps Cumbria still has a burning heart. If you wish, go to Leanna and tell her I am here. Who knows what will come of such things? I will, Maximilian. I swear to you. I would greatly appreciate it, friend. Good luck to you wherever your travels might take you. Farewell, Maximilian. Well, this is the rightful king to uh, Cumbria, which is Durnholm, the city Durnholm, where we did the quest for the king and talked to uh, Leanna. He is the guy that's actually the rightful heir. So we need to go talk to Leanna now and tell her that uh, Maximilian is still here. And it'll affect the outcome of the end of the story. All right, so the final thing we need to do is put on this uh, scarf. It goes here. Okay, head. Um, and then we need to go to the women's camp and tell them of the, the girl that's stuck in the, uh, the city here, the town. So we need to talk to uh, uh, one of these ladies, I think this hurt this lady. What brings you to our tribe, boy? Where did you get the headband? It was given to me by a poor woman who wishes to join you. Why is she not here herself? She is not able to escape the southern encampment. We do not need those who cannot fend for themselves. Um, what message should I have her bring to her? Tell her better to die fighting than to live in captivity. Okay. So they give us a pistol and uh, tell her to give it to her pretty much and then she has to escape to get here. So they're not going to help her, which is part of the quest line. So let's go back to the aisle here. We should have everything we need or everything should be completed now. All right, so that's the Moonshine quest. And then we have the Collector's quest. Okay, so I think we gave him one of the pieces. Uh, let's go to this guard here and turn in that quest for the beast. Alright. So let's save. Talk to her. So we, so we tell her we're going to help her. We don't want to just give her the pistol and let her uh, kill herself, pretty much. Alright, so she's going to follow me now. And we can go to uh, one of these windows back here. Uh, probably like this one right here. There's people that, that path and patrol... Just be really careful. Like this guy right here. His path goes all the way down here. So we need to um, wait till he's away. So you probably could just open this one here. Okay. 
All right. We all go through the window. There you go. It's better than rushing the gates. All right, so there's a little bit of dialogue. And after that, we are done. She thanks you, and we're gone. All right, we're back in town, and now we are going to talk to this guy here. And we just need to have a conversation with him. There is a way that you can convince him, but obviously we have no persuasion. I'm just going to run through this. Imperative, I speak with him. And let's select audiences. Okay. So I must speak with him. Uh, he says, no one enters first without proving themselves in the field of battle. All right. Field of battle. The pit. All right. Win a fight. There you go. Uh, there we go. So we talk to, talk to this guy next. There's another way you can convince him. Um, you can say he's very articulate for a ogre. And he will, uh, you know, talk to you about his background, which is pretty interesting. And actually ties into the uh, Siamese skull quest line that we're in, uh, his story, because he's a smart uh, ogre. So what you have to do now is you have to just uh, tell your guys to wait. So stay, tell what them to wait. What you want of me? Yes, of course. What would you like you me don't to want do? them to leave, because then they'll actually leave your group forever. You want them to wait. I don't like leaving you alone. And they'll still be available when you come back. And that's required because when you go into the uh, pit, you have to go. You have to go in by yourself. You want to schedule a fight? I'm ready. Send me in. Alright, you just pop into uh, combat mode. And this guy's dead. No, nobody in here will be a problem for you. Here we go. Uh, I think the highest level is like level 15. So you shouldn't have any problems. Um, now you can continue on fighting. Uh... Yeah, there you go. That's a sword, dang it. I should have got the sword. It'd be fast about it. So if you win five fights, you will uh, be declared the pit master. Wait, this guy's fast. All right. And the last guy. Oh, my goodness. All right, so that was crazy. Let's hit them with flash fire. All right. We're done. So now you have to get you your I'm ready to get going when you people back. There we go. They join your party. Now you'll, you'll have to fight the first guy. Um, so just to let you know, you'll have to fight the first person before you can progress on. Once you prove yourself with the first person, you can actually talk to him, and he'll let you in. Now you want to save before you talk to him because there is a dialogue where you can actually get his glasses. Alright. Black 
Mountain Clan. He's not a part of the Black Mountain Clan, he's part of the Wheel Clan. And then you tell him, I've been there, their minds are deserted. Uh, they were banished here by Order of the Wheel Clan. Who told you this? And it was the dwarf and the, uh, his name was Gunman. And he knows Gunman, they were friends. Uh, the story he told was very disturbing. You tell him the story that you already read from the pillar. And... Alright, of course I do here, I'll mark your map. So he tells us where the Wheel Clan is. And he also says that um, we need to have glasses, special glasses to get inside. It says a pair of specially made spectacles which he uses thinly sliced Catherine crystal lenses. Every member of the Wheel Clan has a pair, I still have mine. I need those glasses. Um, so there's two options. You ask him, can I use them? Or you can say, I'll get you off this island if you get me into the Wheel Clan. I don't believe you'll ever be leaving this island. Why do you say that? Uh, the captain so pretty much says that the uh, your boat, your ship's already been hijacked, which it hasn't. Um, they let us pass with you on my side, some something, but it's too risky. I'm in a good, good position here. I don't want to jeopardize it. If the men discovered I had joined up with you and planning on leaving, then to rot, uh, it would mean both of our heads. Suit yourself. Um, well, if you happen to get up this rock, could you do me a favor? Uh, perhaps, what is it? Go to tell them that he's here. Uh, sure. Thank you. So we don't have the persuasion to get his glasses from him. Okay, there's three methods to getting the glasses. Uh, the first is to look in the chest. Um, you can pick lock it. If I were to use my unlock contraption or can cantrip, he would aggro, um, and so would he. But I don't want to do that. Um, if you are a pickpocket, he has a pair on him. This is the glasses right here. And if you just want to be a normal person that doesn't, you know, cause problems. You can then just leave the island and go back to Ashbury, and they will have glasses there. So this is it. Um, that's all we need to do in the Isle of Despair. From here, we got a lot of neat quests. I completed quite a few things. Come on, let's go. And we uh, can now leave the island. Now, you can't come back here at all. But as we see, uh, our captain took care of the people that, that were trying to board the ship. And we get to have the loot. So, that wraps up this episode. I uh, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. And hope you enjoyed it. Once again, I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.